Hello all and welcome to another Model Railway video. Now yes, as you can tell from the title, I am going to be attempting an unboxing video today. So, let's get started. Now the engine I'm going to be looking at today is this. This is Batman's mainline Hunslet Charles. And I've recently got started on the 009 scale. I think it was about three months ago I got started on this scale. And it was after watching some videos produced by that model railway guy that I thoroughly enjoyed. And um, I therefore decided to take up doing the scale myself. So yeah, the engine has not been opened. It's all sealed in its packaging. I'm now going to set it out on this bench and open it up, have a good look at it, and then I'm going to give it a run for you guys. So, let's get started. Wow. That is so cool. You got the fine lining, you got the red and blue lining going around the cylinders, around the tanks, the cab. You got this real fine pipework here. You got these beautifully done name plates, and you got the builder's plate. Oh, I've got to get it up close so you can see it better. This thing is just crammed with detail. The one standout feature, and even through just looking through the box that I've seen, is this dome on the top. It's not brass, it's just painted, but how they've done it, it's not like a childish brass paint. It's a really nice colour. The gloss on it, it's, it's not overpowering. It's got a slight bit of gloss, so you've got that reflection, like you can see it probably in the light, just a little bit of a reflection. But it's not too glossy that it looks like someone slapped some gold paint on there. It's really refined. That would be the best word I'd say. You've got also other parts with the colour that are not as prominent. You've got these little components on the side coming off the cylinders. You've got the ends on the cylinders. You've got the silver ring going on the cylinders as well. Sorry, I'm holding it too far away. You've got your smoke box dart. You've got your handrails. You got this lining's just going everywhere, right along that bottom of the frame. It's going there. You got your painted um, springs. The motion gear, the internal motion gear, has also been painted red. I don't think this is working though. It's just for detail. But that's brilliant. And now you can see the name plate a little bit clearer. Sorry, my my style of doing the free end with the camera isn't doing that well tonight. There's inside the cab. You can just see that firebox door there so that's got a flickering light so I'm looking forward to seeing that I can just see the reverser down there there's a the regulator you've got the um, painted back head that also has that brass paint you've got the enhancer for the safety valves that's also got a bottom half that's um, also got that brass paint turn around the other side yeah, you can just see the top of the um, reverser handle there. And then you've got your gauge glasses, which are actually got um, clear plastic being used. It's not just painted, it's, it's actual clear plastic, which is fantastic. Looks brilliant. Then you've got more lining on the back, look at this. You've got lining all the way around here, where the doors where you would load the coal through from, like an open wagon or somewhere. They are, have got the lining, you can see where they've been picked out with the device division is. You've even got lining around the windows and I think on the front you've also got lining around the windows as well. Yeah you do. Look at that. Oh it's it's a really really refined model. That's the best way of putting it. We'll have a look at the detail pack. It's because it's got apparently the same as the quarry hunslets. It's got these um, plates and it does. There we go. Wait for it to come into focus. You've got um, the maker's plate, bring it up close, you've got your maker's plate and you've got your name plates. And they are actual brass. Then the detail pack's a little bit light, but when you've got detail like this, it's not surprising. You've got a spare coupling and it's got the loop, which is a really cool feature because on the model itself, it's just got these, um, like the quarry hands that just with the little pin on it that you put the loop over but it doesn't actually have a loop itself so it's quite cool that they've included a coupling with the um, loop and then you've also got your little lamp 
which you can also install. And that's all that's in the detail pack. Anyway, I'm now going to put this on my 009 gauge layout and give it a run for you guys. So, yeah, here we go. There we are. Charles is now on the layout. So, as I said before, it has not been run in yet, so this will be the very first time this model has been run. So, let's kick it into life and see how it goes. Hopefully I've got the direction right. Oh, it's backwards. It's going. Let's go forwards. Little tap. Oh, there it goes. Woohoo! It's kicked into life. Backwards again. Oh, it gets past that side. That I was really worried about that. I didn't think it was going to clear that side, but... Oh, that's brilliant. Backwards. I've stopped it on a point, so it's probably not going to go now. Oh, no. Considering that's brand new out of the box... That's not bad. Ooh, a little bit hesitant over that join. Oh, and it stopped on the point. I'm not surprised though. Now the control I'm using, it does not have the best speed control. It's quite like notchy. It's not actually smooth. But I am going to get a different control. And it's just running on DC by the way. It's going to stop on the point a bit. No. Oh yeah. It did. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's going. And I think, oh, no, it stopped again to go forwards. Oh no, it's really stopped this time. There's a bit of a bad join there, so that's why it would have stopped. How slow can I actually get this thing to go? Let's try it. I'm going to try... That's as slow as I can get it to go, folks. The control won't me allow me to do it any slower. But it's going. So yeah, I will now do some different camera shots of the loco running and then we'll I'll try and zoom in on this flickering firebox and see what it looks like in, the, in fact I haven't actually seen it yet so I'm gonna the doors actually come open which is good I can see it through there so um, yeah we'll get it running around the track a few times just light engine and give it a chance to run in and then we'll put a load on and see how it tows it here we go Right, so that's had about, oh, I'd say about eight minutes of running time now, just light engine since I started it. So it hasn't been running for that long, and already it's just come to life, even from the word go, it's just been running perfectly. So we'll put it to the test now. We'll put a load on and behind it and send it on its way. Now, folks, I've immediately noticed a problem with... The loco, and it's not the loco's fault, it's the layout's fault. Since it's such a tight radius, the couplings do not have enough play in them when going around the real tight curve around the other side. I've just done a test with it now. So I don't think I'm actually going to be able to do a load in behind it normally. So I've got one other idea which I'm going to try, and we'll see if it works. Now this is what you call improvising, folks. Um, what I've actually done... It's not just any old wire, I couldn't find any standard wire, so I had to nick the end off a capacitor that I had in one of my toolboxes. I've bent it around and made a loop-like shape and a bit of a sliding bar to go to the wagon. Now, I'm going to come up with a better solution than this, because this looks ridiculous. But, just for now, I'm hoping it will be enough so I can actually pull a load and see what the pulling power of this engine is like. So, 
I'll just make sure the wagons are all connected up. Oop. While I was connecting the back one, the front one come off. Oh. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's hope. Here we go. Wrong way. I've probably just taken the link off. And I've stalled the engine. It's all going wrong now. Oh, there it goes. Whoa. Here we go. We'll let it just go past one more time. I'm watching it, and it seems to be holding. It's going around. Woohoo! It's working. Let's see how long it will last. So the temporary coupling seems to be doing its job. Here it comes. The spacing isn't that great. It's not realistic, so I am going to have to do something to resolve this problem. Now, if you're interested in the V-tipplers in the back, they are kits by Dundas Models. I weathered these myself, and I'll tell you what, a real cool, easy kit to do. So I flicked the lights off and slowed the engine right down, and as you can see, there's the glowing firebox. You may have got a quick glimmer of it, but it's there. We'll let it run past one more time. Bit hard to see. I need a rolling road realistically to put it on. There we go, folks. That is Backman's amazing 009 mainline Hunslet Charles. The perfection of this is incredible. The detail, the lining, the colour of the brass work on it, the performance right out of the box, an extremely brilliant model. I'm really really pleased with it and it was an engine I didn't think was actually going to get around this track. It doesn't with wagons at the moment but I'm going to try and resolve that problem and make a adapter but I'd say for most standard 009 gauge layouts which would be certainly bigger than this one. I'd say you wouldn't have a problem with it. And I've seen plenty of people running theirs on reasonably tight radiuses, not as tight as this, and they haven't had a problem. So, and I would say also maybe that the wagons are a little bit small, maybe some passenger coaches would be a better idea. After all, it is a mainline Hunslet, and I'd say they would have hauled passenger carriages. So, yeah, that's something to consider when buying one of these. Just don't have a very, very tight radius, like mine. <laughs> anyway, if you're wanting to pick one of these up for yourself, there's many retailers that have them in stock, but the one I personally recommend is the one that I've bought this engine off. This locomotive came from Middleton Model Railway in Ekaterhuna. Colin, who is over there, is fantastic. He's a very good salesperson. I've dealt with him for a long time since I was a very young kid. I've been buying trains. And um, he's very good. If there's something wrong, he'll get it sorted. He'll help you sort it out. And if you want advice on different products and like scenery and different bits and pieces, he will put you onto whatever you need to to know. And what he doesn't know, he will find a website or something for it. He's very onto it. I cannot recommend him enough. Anyway, thank you again for watching this unboxing video. I hope for my first one, it hasn't been too bad in that I'm giving you an idea of what to expect from this loco if you do buy one yourself and um, yeah thanks again have a good rest of your day bye for now